Smell is our most primitive and least understood sense. Perfume manipulates that sense, instantly reminding us of good times past and speaking of glamour and sophistication to those who get close. doesn't disappoint. Fragrance exploits our feelings so successfully, it's become a multi-billion dollar global industry. I mean, you know what it says. Mm -hmm. We all know what yeah. it says, but, but what does it really it say? Mm. But with more brands making more scent than ever before, perfumes that used to whisper now have to shout. It is an idea of opening a door to a masterpiece. Today, the marketing's as important as the smell, and perfumers face a challenge. Ladies, fragrance today, Chai Versace. Burberry, Burberry Chier, Burberry, Burberry Can they convince a new generation that fragrance is liquid luxury? Or has the romance already evaporated? In springtime, Paris smells of new leaves. Moped exhaust and untipped cigarettes smoke defiantly in public places. But not here. The house of Guerlain is French perfumery personified. Bonjour, madame. Guerlain sell grand perfumes made to ancient recipes, issuing new ones when they see fit, which isn't often. They rely on mothers with a sense of tradition, bringing their daughters to the townhouse. Blanche is 12, ready for her first fragrance. The ladies of the first floor salon don't do flirting or squirting. They're here to gently shepherd. Bonjour. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, madame. Bienvenue. Bien sûr, oui, avec plaisir. Très bien. Son premier parfum. Son premier parfum guerlain. There's monumental perfume available, dark and musky, created before the telephone or the airplane, but it can wait until Blanche is older. She chooses a classic from 2006. Violet and raspberry notes unmask a hint of orange blossom, sitting on a base of iris and tonka bee. It's called insolence. In the twilight, Blanche returns to her arrondissement, probably unaware that in the big shop on the Grand Boulevard, she was the most important customer of the day. The Guerlain way is to get them young and keep them for life. It's a philosophy that served master perfumer Jean-Paul Guerlain well. I'm not able to live without perfume and without horses. His family have made fragrances for 183 years. They have been for a generation of Guerlain working in the company. That's my grandfather, who was my teacher for perfume. Take a seat. Ah. Where are my dogs? Ah. The first fragrance I remember it was in 1941, I think, when the German arrived in Paris. I was three years old. It was my birthday. My nanny told my mother, you must all the same give a cake to your son for his birthday. And it was a strawberry tart. 
and I still have in the nose the smell of the strawberry tart. Always women are always being inspiration. And that's what my grandfather taught me. You create perfume for a woman with whom you, you're in love. You know, the most beautiful girl in the world, uh, when she goes to see her lover, she, if possible, gets off her dress, take off her makeup, what's left, the charm of her voice and her perfume. A woman can be ugly in daytime and wonderful at night time. Guerlain fragrances make a powerful statement quietly. Frenchness in liquid form. Here you have the, the letters of the different President of the Republic. Mr. Sarkozy over there. Which perfume does he wear? A special one for him. Um, I know him quite well. Mr. Giscard d'Estaing. Jean-Paul is the old guard. Once upon a time, companies like Guerlain were French perfume. Today, judged by sales alone, these ancient houses have a tiny share of the world fine fragrance market. The big business is now done on the other side of the Atlantic. In early May, the warmth of the sun makes Manhattan smell of baked tarmac and spring flowers. The hot subway air tastes of burning steel. But most New Yorkers are in here, smelling something else on the day before Mothering Sunday. It's a key date in the perfume calendar. The fragrance department at Macy's store on West 34th Street is the most important scent retail space in the Western world. Ladies fragrance today, Chai Versace. We're just uh, celebrating women all around the world here in New York and for Mother's Day. Sample Versace for ladies today. Modric of ladies today. We make everybody just beautiful all around. Welcome to Chanel, ladies. All the miracles happen right here. <laughs> <laughs> The big name brands that now dominate the industry have made perfume a fashion item, something to be changed regularly. Finding new angles stretches the sales team to the limit. It's very, it's very, it's very soft, it's very summery. Ed Hardy fragrance is a beautiful scent, a tattoo inspired scent. You're experiencing strawberry, grapefruit, a vanilla pudding. You want one? By sundown, they'll have sold gallons of scent to thousands of customers. Any floral scent you ladies like? Burberry Sheer, Burberry Sport. And that's just this one store. Loving time for ladies today. Gardenia, lavender, lilac. Euphoria for ladies. Can I try for ladies? Ladies, euphoria, having class. Would you like to try Burberry? Yes, today. Burberry. Euphoria for ladies. Burberry Sheer. Ladies, euphoria. Five years ago, the New York Times saw the frenzy and asked scent critic Chandler Burr to write a column. There's way too much. It's absurd. It's essentially an addiction. To get that high, to get the thrill that you had, you have to keep shooting up. And you shoot up more and more and more frequently. And you just throw things at the market and nothing ever sticks. And because it's just too much and people have been now trained to just go on to the next thing. 
if you throw so much stuff at people, they have no time to love anything, to become attached to anything, and you're not making anything good enough for them to become attached to. Chandler writes at home, inundated by a fragrant tsunami. So this is delivery. There's a lot of it. This is a Yves Saint Laurent Bote, and this is Bliss. Yeah. This is love. Yeah. No. The love is juicy fruit gum. Ugh. Okay, this is sort of Lord of the Rings. It looks like something that Liv Tyler to throw this at you. Ooh, doesn't disappoint. Oh my God. This is, this is pot. Oh, hang on one second. Hey, how are you? Another one. All right. Did you come by yesterday? Yes. Yeah, yeah. all right, thank you. More. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. 15 years ago, there would have been a lot less. There were about 150 launches a year, and in 2011, there's going to be, there will have been a, a 1,200, I think. So these are the fresh. This is the Bliss. This is the Marc Jacobs. This is the Terry Mugler. Okay, so I'm gonna do it here. Oh, that's interesting. This, this is a fruit. This is a modern fruit. Ah, there's a, actually a beautiful extract of natural saffron. Spectacular. There's just so much of it, and there's only so much of Chandler Burr to spray it on. How to make new fragrances stand out from the crowd is the question vexing perfume marketing executives. Queen of them all is Veronique Gabay Pinsky. She's after the most elusive consumer group of all. They are called by the industry Gen Y, and, and a lot of people are trying to reach out to them, 18 to 27, something like that. When you ask these people, uh, how would you describe yourself? The key adjective that comes from them is creative. I think they make a very clear difference between what is marketed and what is genuinely created. Tommy Hilfiger wants a new scent, and he wants Veronique to find a way of making it a must-have for Generation Y. We wanted to reconnect the younger generation with Tommy Hilfiger fashion brand. Great challenge of our business is that nobody needs another fragrance so when you launch something to the market good is simply not good enough hi joe hill figures perfumes are made by the giant estee lauder group where veronique oversees all designer fragrances she's got a big idea for tommy a scent called loud containing liquid rock and roll the whole project is about mixing music and, and fragrance together. And we said, you know what? Could we push the boundaries of collaboration between music and fragrance? Scent is invisible, so the packaging has a lot of work to do. The most potent selling tool of all is the bottle. Veronique has to win the hearts of a whole generation for Tommy. She's reached out to the Picasso of bottle design. Chad Levine is so hot that if he was a bottle himself, you'd drop him. Tommy was very clear that he wanted to see something on the shelf, see something in the stores that was a literal translation of something from the music genre. 
Chad's assembled a mood board, a collage of rock and roll references for the drum and bass generation. Rockstar Boyd here um, brought in uh, a lot of his LPs here. The, the volume knobs on the amps, you know, cued into the caps. The uh, record boxes, uh, wristbands, shopping bags, gift sets, stacks of records, everything relating back to music. Normally, in, when you walk into Bloomingdale's department store, they have the piece of paper they spray for you. Well, this one's their little ticket stub. But these pieces definitely go after a younger demographic. The bottle itself is obviously inspired by an LP. And within the glass mold, we have the ridges in here. It's distorted, it's pulsing, it's vibrating, it's moving. And the cap itself, we played off of a lot of ideas off of the knobs, off of amps, guitars, all of that. And then the girls is just, you know, the bright magenta, which again is so signature for Tommy now in his jeans line. We designed a resin sleeve that the bottle actually slides into. Okay. A wink and a nod to an, a physical LP and how you take them in and out of the sleeves. Side. Get the, the um, consumer to actively participate, you know, mm -hmm. in the packaging. When you come out with a brand or a product that is so cool, um, the world attacks it. They all buy it. Every single one of them. In this one, we're expecting great things. Paris in midsummer. Jean-Paul Galland's promotional methods are rather more old school. The master perfumer entices journalists to the cool of his chateau. He wants to mention his new cologne, named after a hero of French literature, suave gentleman rogue Arsène Lupin. This one is, is important because uh, I'm 73, maybe it will be the last launching I'll do. What do you think of the big houses making the mass market fragrances now? I hate that. <laughs> you hate it? Well, I don't I like marketing, I hate it. Isn't this marketing what you're doing today? Well, it's not quite marketing I'm doing. It's not a panel test and things like that. Too. Panel testing or focus grouping are standard tools in the perfume industry, but they're not for the likes of Galan. At least, not yet. Jean Paul has chosen a successor. For four generations, the master perfumer has been a Galan. But when Jean Paul's son decided not to be the fifth, he had to look outside the family. Thierry Vassa is the man who will be king. Right now, he's just a regent prince. Maybe. Oh, there are a lot of girls. So, I mean, you need at least two roosters in the coop today. Mm. Today is his day, his special day. Vassa's task will not be easy. He must keep Galin relevant to the 21st century while celebrating the glories of the 19th. I am in a position which is absolutely unique because Jean-Paul has been taught by his grandfather. I have direct link of somebody who created his first fragrance in the 19th century. Uh, people think it's a heavy burden not to be blood-related, but when you have a lovable person like Jean-Paul Garlin, if the task is easy. The ladies of the press, and it's always the ladies who get invited to the big house, depart for the helipad and Paris, ready to file their copy.
few journalists are invited to the real inner sanctum. Every Wednesday, Thierry Vasser travels from Paris to meet John Paul at the Galin factory. The heir apparent has a constant reminder of the weight of family history next to his office. It's the lab of the greatest Galin of all, creator of Mitsuko, Le Bleu and Chalimar. Grandpa Jacques. This is the organ that uh, has been used by Jacques Garlin. They are what he used to play with. And Mr. Garlin was coming here and was making his formula. Some of them travel through uh, the time pretty, pretty good. It's a cool place where I like to sit. Here he comes. Here the boss. Look <laughs> through the shade, he's coming. A young man. When he came to Galin, Thierry Vassa was a rising star. He could have gone anywhere, but Jean-Paul Galin offered something more than just a job. I lost my father when I was a child, and as an adult, I have been uh, always growing at the shade of a mature man. And I used to say that since I find a dad at almost 50, I got my uh, childhood back. And it is, uh, well, what I'm telling you is very personal actually, but <laughs> to me, uh, be back uh, in a loving, respecting, uh, admiring relationship is uh, fascinating and make me young also. It's very weird, but it's uh, nevertheless how I feel. The relationship is good for Jean-Paul too. He still has a role. He still commands respect. The baton is being passed, but slowly. Thierry, I like him very much. And he's uh, very gifted and I uh, think he will do a very good job. And we get on very well together. And th that's the most important thing. York, Veronique Gabay Pinsky and her team have labored through the sweltering summer. They have a bottle prototype for the new Tommy Hilfiger scent. The next matter is the actual liquid, known in the trade as the juice. Veronique has brought together a two man dream team. We've asked two perfumers, very young. They've never been involved in the industry for the last 20 years. Mm. You're simply they're too young to have done that. They are part of that generation, and they're both very interested in music. Hot but cool, Aurelien Guichard made play for Comme des Garçons and unforgivable for Sean John. You have to be a bit naive and innocent to try things that people tell you it's not possible. And maybe you'll create the best fragrance of your life. Jan Vasnia wrote the formula for Marc Jacobs' Lola. 
he and Guichard have just months to produce countless minute variations on a theme. So just how do you create rock and roll as a smell? Patchouli. It was very much used uh, in the past by hippies. And the rose is probably the most universal way to express femininity. We thought that was rock and roll for us. When we worked the rose with the patchouli, we thought that was rock and roll. As their juice develops, the perfumers constantly compare it to the latest releases. Veronique writes ten commandments for all her perfumes. Number one, thou shalt smell fantastic. First time that you access a fragrance, you're going to do it because of the idea, the uh, advertising campaign, the bottle design. And then, you know, what's happening is that the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and hopefully the tenth time you're going to buy the bottle is because of what's inside. Quite frankly, a fragrance cannot exist if you don't have the amazing quality in the bottle. There are still several versions of the scent. Wendy Patel monitors the market for Veronique's team, watching for shifts in the public's tastes. Maybe we could try to bring the patchouli up just a little bit more, just so that you kind of get it more so with the rose. Patchouli, a soft-leaved relative of mint from Southeast Asia, is the summer's must-have ingredient. Kind of what gives it like a sexiness. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's... Okay. Like we're fun, we're fruity, we're juicy, we're... But it could just have a thread of that a little bit more, so... The process involves infinite, minute changes to the formulation, getting them assessed going back to the lab. The clock is ticking. The juice has to be ready for the pre-Christmas publicity drive. The stakes are high. Hilfiger is famed for two big sellers, both well respected by the perfume trade. Loud has a lot to live up to. Manhattan is in the midst of a heat wave when the day arrives for the client to smell what Veronique and her team hope will be the winning formula. So it's a big day because we're meeting Tommy. This is the juice, this is the soul and the core and the DNA of the project. So really we're at the very end of the process. Tommy Hilfiger arrives 15 minutes late and is due somewhere else in half an hour. Because we didn't want to go through traditional market research for this project. We wanted to keep the creative process very creative. Really, the, uh, the juices have been universally appreciated and in a way that's very interesting for us because it's not like I like it it was immediately I love it what is it I want it so it's it's interesting is this the way the bottle is going to look yeah because when it's filled with uh, fluid it's going to look a bit different and these are still models yeah they're not production this is plastic still yeah. it's not still it's acrylic mm -hmm. it's that fine balance of it pulsing but legibility you know mm -hmm. What does it really say? I mean, you know what it says. Mm -hmm. We all know what yeah. it says, but, but what does it really it. say? Mm. And if it's OU, yeah. it's not going to resonate and mm. connect back to the advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll make sure it's, uh, it's there. I think that we can achieve that. So your eye will get into the L and the D more so. Mm -hmm. And uh, the box it turned out to be really cool. So it really gives you the feeling of uh, like a real... Um, CD case? C well, yeah. Uh, and what we'll have a side here that will open, flip out, so the consumer can slide mm -hmm. out 
the bottle. It's because it's, it's a bit pink. Yeah, I yeah. agree. We need, we want to put a little more of a blush color into it, so a little more of a skin color mm -hmm. to tone down yeah, the fluo so. yeah. of the pink. And again, a little yeah. more yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. A little yeah. warmer. Yeah. 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 What I like also is the tagline, which is scent and sound mixed mm -hmm. by Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> Mixing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fragrance and, and music together, and you know, yeah. we've mixed them together, you know? <laughs> You're gonna have to tear the duct tape to smell the fragrance. Okay. So, and that's an innovation. At the same time, we will give a little bit of education to a consumer on the fragrance itself, explain how it was created by mixing sound and scent together. So this is where we are. It's always about this um, rock and roll rose. So it's a, this overdose of um, rose. And here it's an overdose of patchouli with a teeny bit of rose that run through just to give it some... Um, some extra. Yeah, some nice. sensibility. Yeah, it's good. Beautiful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. fantastic. I love it. Oh, pink rose. <laughs> That's incredible. It's <laughs> great. Mm -hmm. And lots. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very good. Mm -hmm. In terms of the men's, men's, men's is fantastic. Good. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> it's really fantastic. thing touch us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So. Tommy Hilfiger has left the building. The green light is lit. Loud is off and running. In a Swiss plant, the production line begins initial bottling. They'll go onto shelves beside dozens of other new releases. For this Tommy, the war has just begun. Today, many perfumers are being forced to use fewer, cheaper ingredients to maintain profits. That doesn't happen at Guerlain. Chalimar, the jewel in the company crown, is still made to the recipe written 90 years ago by Jacques Guerlain. One of the ingredients is iris oil, notoriously difficult to extract. In this butter form, it costs 13,000 pounds a kilo. Precision is essential because a drop or a drip either way, and this isn't Shalimar. This is an old world perfume, long on ingredients, many of them taken from nature. Every Galin fragrance contains a secret chemical mix known as the Guerlinade. It's been the DNA of their fragrances since the start. Here, I have a key, which goes to the most ancient one that we've found. Oof, oof, oof. I'm going to make that this is the Pierre Francois Pascal book, this one. He opened his store in 1828, and this book has suffered a bit because you know that our factory has been bombed in 44. Well, what the shit happened? Those books are alive. So this is the uh, original from Jacques. Candide des Fleurs, we did a re-edition. Uh, Vol de Nuit, extrait. The books 
are very emotionally linked to Jean-Paul because it's the handwriting or his grandfather or his great-great-grandfather. His mom's writing on several books. His family is here, so it's like all those ghosts are kept in those pages, and maybe when you open one, some of, of those ghosts might pop out. Who knows? He respects the history, but Thierry is about to make his own mark. He's going to tinker with Shalimar. It is uh, an idea of uh, opening a door to a masterpiece. And that's something I'm keen and interested in. And you'll see if it works or not. But of course, you will have to think about what Jean-Paul is going to think about you playing with the, with the family jewels. There have been a few light summer editions of Shalimar, but the big seller is still the heavyweight original. Vasa wants to make a version for a younger market. It'll be pink. This is a pivotal moment in the company's history. It's an emotionally dangerous thing, but I change with this book on my heart and keeping in mind that uh, you can't betray the book. Vasa must change more than the sense. New markets are opening up east and west, and on his watch, the house will have to compete or risk becoming a museum piece. Time has changed too. The world gets wider, and it's a big village. It's called uh, globalization. It sounds like a bad word to a lot of people who love Guerlain because Guerlain is Franco-French and very artisanal. I think we have to look around us, so my signature is going to be indeed different than what has been done before. Across the channel, in the London offices of the Estee Lauder Companies, Inc., they're in a party mood. Loud is going to launch first in the UK. The press have been invited, and they'll expect to see some rock and roll patchouli. Marketing manager Trudy Collister can't find any. Our florist said absolutely not. They, they just couldn't get it. That has to happen. The patchouli has to happen. Verani cannot show up at an event where we're talking about patchouli in a fragrance, and it's not there. I don't care what fragrance houses have to do, but that is a massive, massive issue. But they came back this morning to say, you know, we just can't get it from, from anywhere. I think that this is where we have to be a little bit more resourceful in terms of reaching out to, you know, a multitude of other people to track this down. We've, we've now only got four, three or four days, so now I think we're in big trouble. But something has to be there. Leave. Can you um, source nurseries? Yeah, we, we, we can look into that. OK, great. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> The calm before the storm. Eh? Yes. <laughs> and we'll get straight on to this patchouli issue. Thank you so much. OK. Look forward to seeing Bye. you on Bye. Wednesday and Thursday. Looking forward to seeing you too, guys. Bye. So much. Bye. 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 <laughs> this patchouli business is a bit of a... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an issue, but we'll, we'll, we'll resolve it. I'm sure we'll find yeah. something. We'll, we'll get on the internet, yeah. make a few calls. Well, what happens if it is unobtainable? It won't be. It won't be. <laughs> you, find, you find different 
solutions. You, you make it work. You make it work. The publicity team have a secret weapon ready for the journalists. And it's a commercial come video mission statement featuring indie band The Ting Tings as brand ambassadors. You can almost smell the perfume. The launch takes place in a boutique hotel in London's exciting West End. Trudy and her team are in a rooftop penthouse filled with Pacific Rim finger food and a rare herbal substance. Believe it or not, this is an authentic patchouli plant, which seems vaguely odorless at this point. So we're going we're gonna to make it look pretty because that's what we do. It doesn't look extraordinary, but it will be extraordinary when we present it. But at the end of the day, I think it's important to show people the true raw ingredients. And we had all hands on deck, and we reached out to the right people, and we were able to get it. There was not an option to not find it. This is the long lead press launch for magazines that need to know about overnight sensations months in advance. Trudy briefs her team about what young people are like. Music to the youth generation is really, really important. You'll always see that they're plugged into to their iPod or to, to their mobile phone listening to music. Um, everything about them is music. I'd like to build the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees. Also on the roof, more brand ambassadors. Model and it girl Daisy Lowe is rock and roll aristocracy. Her young old friend Josh Beach is a model and part time punk musician. this music play in your life? I sing, but to myself. And I mean, I've always got music on. I mean, I couldn't go anywhere without my iPod. I'd... Music is everything to us, so, and they've, I mean, their fragrance is called Loud. Veronique has flown in to ensure everyone is on the same conceptual platform. You tend to have preconception of what, you know, younger people would be like or would like. And in fact, you realize if you let really them tell you what they like with their own words or in that case with their own nose uh, they went for the most beautiful ingredients in, in perfumery to be honest we didn't know what the end game would be but we knew what we wanted the uh, journey to be the last collaborators and certainly not the least were the uh, band that we worked with uh, called the Ting Tings mm -hmm. and that's where I think there's a uh, genuine uh, authenticity in, in, in the, the project. You know, somebody asks you, at the end of the day, you want to sell fragrance, right? Yeah. And yes, at the end of the day, of course, that's, that's what we're about. But, uh, but try to do it in a way that's uh, genuine and, and different. So, um, brilliant. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh, teachers here. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm loving it. And then I'm loving it. <laughs> Positive press is vital because a mid-market fragrance is at risk from the moment it's born. Hey, if the next big thing doesn't fly off the shelves, it'll get pushed out of the spotlight and into the bargain bin. We can buy some nice frozen pizza. We can buy eyeliner. Oh, ice cream. Scent critic Chandler Burr has killed a few perfumes in his time and knows where the bodies are buried. And here's a perfume. Wow. Look at this. Every single perfume here virtually has started out in a higher level, in a more prestigious point of sale. And frequently they will have a year's run. If they go down for a bit one year and down another one, then they roll them out here. 
If I'm a designer, am I upset that these are here, or if I'm a brand, or am I pleased to see them here? You're pleased to see them here because you are making a lot of money. Now, if you're Chanel and you're here, you call your lawyer. This is Calvin Klein, okay? Do you want to be wearing a $3,000 suit from a brand that has a product that is being sold in a, essentially, a grocery store? That's a question. Does the money that you make selling this outweigh the slight fall in the luster of Calvin Klein as a brand? It probably does, frankly. Calvin Klein will allow stuff to be sold here where it would never allow its clothing to be. Because, because fragrance is the single best way of monetizing celebrity and brand ever created. And because if you can, you can sell it here, but you can sell it at a price that is, that is something that people who live in the suburbs near here, people who have normal jobs and drive normal cars, can buy. And they can buy a piece of Calvin Klein. It's September, and Thierry Vassa is in the fast lane. He's happy with his new pink Chalimar and has submitted samples to Jean-Paul Guelin. I asked from a perfumer to another perfumer an advice. He didn't say anything. He didn't even make a face. Jean-Paul didn't sign me a letter saying it's good. I don't have a stamp of approval. because he didn't throw the, the smelling strip to my face or on the floor. So I guess it was not that bad. Without a definite steer, he's about to do something almost unheard of for a Guerlain perfumer. He's going to ask the marketing department what they think. Marguerite Ranjard is in charge. C'est ton premier Chalimar, euh, quand tu t'essayes à euh, cette famille orientale quand même qui est euh, très particulière et que Chalimar a inventé, a créé, et c'est comme si c'était tes premiers pas, tu sais. À ton avis, c'est la couleur définitive, ça Bon, ça suggère quoi cette couleur Moi, ça me suggère euh, de la douceur. Ouais. C'est-à-dire quelque chose qui va être très enveloppant. Il y a une femme, quand elle a senti ce parfum, elle m'a dit, euh, j'ai l'impression, c'est comme si j'avais euh, un cachemire, une étole en cachemire autour de moi. Et bien pour moi, ça, c'est le cachemire que tu as euh, juste avant d'enfiler la robe. Et t'es nu sous ton cachemire. Parce que je m'inscris en tant que parfumeur derrière ce qui a été fait sur Chalimar par Jacques avec des matières qui n'existaient pas à l'époque. Ranjard lends an ear and a nose. She's not about to tell the perfumer what he should make next. Thierry, il est, il est chez Guerlain avec cet héritage et ce patrimoine euh, de parfumeur avant lui, c'est la cinquième génération. Et je ne peux que essayer en tant que femme et de moins de 40 ans d'essayer de réagir quand euh, il travaille euh, au fur et à mesure des soumissions et, et du développement créatif. Paris, New York, Oxford Street. After months of concept and design, the real test for Tommy Hilfiger's Loud is the high street shopper. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, are we loud? Yes, we are. Loud. Loud. Okay, so just over to Jackie. Thank you, Debbie. Hello and welcome to our world of loud and proud in Devon's London. Yay! It's very exciting for us and I hope you'll, you, you will all join with me to make today a great success. Yay! We have got some incentives and that is going to be a £5 gift card for Debenhams. It's the first person to hit their stretch target. 
be passionate about what you do. We are committed to working together. For us. This is bigger than any fragrance launch we've done recently, so they're very excited. They're hyped up. You can never predict full success in this business. You can't. The first reaction of your sales force mm -hmm. is an excellent indicator. There's no customers around. Where are they? Oh, Let's like try it, madam. Loud? Are you loud or are you proud? What? Our new one from Tommy Hilfiger. Like to try, sir? It's launched today. Oh, it's quite light, isn't it? I like it's it. really pretty, very floral, very feminine. If you like a small one, if you love her, big one. You suppose she doesn't like it? She will love it. I know she'll like it. I'm not sure if rock and roll would be the words I would use to describe it. It actually is reactivated, the ingredients are reactivated by perspiration. Come out again, that's a really good idea. Tobacco that's in really that one, nice. to give it the masculine edge. That's really nice. Yeah. Gorgeous, yeah. My boyfriend yeah again, like the that. same thing, same technology. You know, when he's in the club, or if he's DJing, that type of thing as well. Definitely, <laughs> that's lovely. Yeah, they have got that kind of mm. rock and roll-y kind of... Definitely you'd want to wear it on a night out, wouldn't mm. you? Definitely. But it's very comfortable to hold. And it sounds very sexy oh, as well, loud. It doesn't smell gay. Yeah, it doesn't oh. smell gay. Like, I'm not saying gays can't oh, wear it, but... British perfume fans have been Tommy Hilfiger's guinea pigs. Trudy Collister has the first sales figures. So how does it look? It's looking good. It's looking good. I mean, our early indications, given that we've only had two weekends of trading, so theoretically about 10 days, uh, we're, we're really, really happy. I did hear earlier on today that in the northeast, in um, Newcastle, we went to, to a sold out position over the weekend. Obviously, it's running up to Christmas. I mean, looking at this, I can actually see several of the Christmas gift sets have been sold already. What would you have said if it actually had gone badly? We didn't expect it to go badly, so it, the, no, that hasn't might... happened. When we saw it for the first time, we knew this was going to work for us. But is it millions or hundreds of thousands? Or... We couldn't comment. Right. But... So it's probably not either of those then. The real battleground is Christmas. The industry does 60% of its business in the last quarter of the year. All over the Western world, perfumers, chemical manufacturers, growers, brand managers and distributors hold their collective breath to see who buys what. A mid-market scent launching in Europe and selling $20 million worth in its first year will get industry insiders talking. Even before Loud launched in Europe, experts were estimating sales of $45 million. Whether they guess right, is a closely guarded secret. In Paris, at Maison Guerlain, Christmas is a fragrant bonanza, but that doesn't lift a terrible gloom. Two months earlier, Jean-Paul Guerlain had gone on live television to talk about his career and brought it to an abrupt end with a racist comment. Guerlain issued apologies, but it was too late. Demonstrators gathered on the Champs-Élysées. There were placards calling for boycotts. Jean-Paul's contract was terminated. His reign was over in chaos. I can't accept what has been said. 
It is crass. It is from another time. It hurts my feelings a lot. Uh, deeply. I can't tell you why this enormity uh, came out of his mouth, but it's just very, very, very disturbing and sad for me. Thierry Vassa is now the king on the Gelan throne. On me cherche partout, non? I admire his career. I love his fragrances. My first fragrance was Abbey Rouge that he made. He's my uh, hero, of course. This man is an old lion, and uh, you, you just deal with old lions, I guess. Uh, it's not easy. It's not the best way to leave your professional career. And it is uh, painful for me too. I told you, we had, uh, or we have, a sensitive relationship. And this has absolutely nothing to do with it. Are you still going to have to deal with your adopted dad sometimes? Well, around food, yes. I'll uh, see him in private. And that's it. What about around perfume? No. You're in charge now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Next time, we meet the people who actually invent perfumes. <laughs> Creative geniuses with a language all their own. So I can give in this perfume a kind of cool note, quite cool and smooth. We'll be dealing with big concepts. A lot of the great classic French perfumes hint at how women really smell. And meeting the few with the right stuff to make it to no school. I was hired. He doesn't know anything about chemistry, you know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I think he's got a lot of talent. And part two of Perfume is here on BBC4 at nine next Tuesday night. And tomorrow at nine, we're emptying the bank account as we check in at the Hotel Deluxe. Time Shift explores the hideaways of the super rich in a brand new programme.